Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Welcome in. Uh, we're probably going to start at 12.05. We've got some people trickling in now. Excited to get started. Thanks, Michaela, for setting everything up. Even though she's probably embarrassed by the shout out, but we'll, we'll get it to her. <laughs> Cool. I remember when we we first were doing some of these, we were trying to figure out like how do you get music to play on a webinar, and and it's so tricky. You have to do you have to be sharing the screen that mm -hmm. has the music playing on it, and you have to like enable that you want the music playing on that specific tab. Um, we we went crazy trying to figure it out, but it was it, it does make it more uh, exciting when you get into it. <laughs> yes. The logistics behind trying to facilitate these types of webinars is it's a lot of logistics involved. Yep. hundred percent. But thankfully we have the kind people of AirMeet to, to build some good software for us and help us out who is actually a swag up customer, which is cool. Oh, even better. That's so cool. Yep. 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 Awesome. Where are they based out of? I actually don't remember to be honest. I'm I'm pretty sure they're remote. I mean, a lot of the companies that end up working with Swag Up often have some sort of remote presence, just because the help, you know, from a logistics standpoint. Right. Uh, absolutely. But I, I don't remember exactly where they're at. Cool. Cool. Welcome in. All right, we're we're at twelve oh five. We're recording this, so we'll definitely share it with with others that come in. Um, but appreciate everybody who's joined so far and, and those that'll, that'll trickle in over the next few moments. Um, really excited to be chatting here with Elizabeth Reed. We've been, you know, we've known each other and, you know, professionally, I guess, and as companies for what, maybe four plus years, five years almost. I think yeah. it's five actually, right? Been a little journey for sure. Yeah. It's been a and while. First case studies. <laughs> oh, that's right. I remember that. Yeah, that's right. Back in, I think, I think we were saying like end of 2018 or 18. so, mm -hmm. something like that. The company, we started in May of, of 2017, uh, and I guess you're an early adopter. You find out the uh, the up and coming solutions to to problems. So we, yeah. we appreciate people like you who are, are willing to give a, a chance on on some young up and coming companies. So, uh, and, and thanks for for joining us here today. Absolutely, super yeah. excited. Glad to be invited. And uh, yeah, love telling people about what an amazing tool it is. So excited to get to tell more people about all of the new features. Yeah, for sure. So I guess real quick before we jump in, just a little bit of background on you. Obviously, you've you've kind of run the gamut a little bit from product manager, project manager, HR leader, operations leader. Um, you know, been largely over the last several years in in faith driven organizations. So you're you know literally in the faith driven investor now was at Tithely before, which part of an acquisition with with Breeze, which is, you know, software for church management. But what's mm -hmm. kind of the, the quick two minute synopsis on, on your background? Oh. <laughs> well, like most people in kind of the administrative office type roles, you wear multiple hats. So whether you went to college to become uh, specific in the HR field and or you just learned through trial by fire, um, I was one of those learned by trial by fire. So I had the opportunity to kind of jump into different responsibilities that someone needed to manage and uh, you kind of get your feet wet and begin stumbling along but you start uh, getting acclimated and so yeah that's i, I kind of started in the church space so i was in uh, working for a church actually doing kind of all of the administrative aspects of the church which is where i then got connected to breeze and tithely um, and then of course started my journey there jumped into customer service project management all the different aspects of software being fully remote um, and then of course my beloved HR space that um, I got the wonderful opportunity of onboarding new employees through the organization and creating processes and things to increase employee engagement, which, you know, this was seven years ago before we were, had any idea COVID was coming, you know, so 
yeah, had the opportunity to try and create a way of how do we set, how do we send people birthday presents when we're all over the world? How do we send people anniversary gifts? How do we, how do we get something physical to them? And uh, yeah, so I got to do a lot of different fun things in the HR space. Onboarding new employees was probably one of my absolute favorites though, for sure. Getting to meet them and help them get past all those first day jitters and help them get connected to our culture and kind of understanding how we internally operate. So definitely one of my favorite parts of it. No, yep. And it, it, you know, the onboarding experience is such a pivotal moment in the journey because it really sets the stage of like what your, you know, years and years of, you know, service that this company is going to be like, it's, you know, what's the 100%. culture like, what are the expectations like, do they, are they thoughtful? Are they intentional about the experience? It, it, you mm-hmm. know, those first 30 days can make or break like your perception of, of a company and, and what that relationship 100%, is. 100%. Well, if you think about it from a customer's perspective too, like if I go into a, a restaurant or I go into a facility and no one's greeting me, no one recognizes that I'm there, I have to wait for 30 minutes before someone comes over and greets me, like those types of things dim your first impression of that experience. And so I definitely took that lens to the onboarding perspective of, I started emailing the new hire, the moment they signed the offer letter, we had this whole onboarding campaign email um, where they would get videos from us, they would get giffies from us, they would get all sorts of things to just start building that culture and building that relationship before they even stepped in the door. And then of course, when they stepped in the door, first thing they're meeting with us in a virtual space, real in, in, in uh, inviting environment. And we did lots of different fun things. Like we would send them cereal, right? So part of our onboarding experiences, we would ask them in one of our introductory emails, what's the last thing you binge watched on Netflix? What's your favorite cereal? And do you have any furry loved ones? And if they shared what their favorite cereal was, we would go order that on Amazon and get it sent to them so that they would have cereal, right? And and it's just this quirky $5 easy thing to facilitate, Um, but it begins to, especially in your fully remote space, just set that culture of, we care about you, we like to have fun, we like to get work done, but we like to have lots of fun too. So definitely think that onboarding experience builds that customer um, loyalty, which, you know, your employees are your customers, if you think of it, you know, so your employee brand loyalty, your, um, your employee experience. So definitely an important part of the, of the employee's journey. Yeah. It's, you know, first impressions are so hard to shake, you know, whether it's a restaurant or, or join the company. It's like the, you know, the things that happen in the first day, week, month, like, like I said, they really stick in the back of your mind. It really takes a lot of work to like undo that if you, you know, if you mm-hmm. had the wrong start, but it can also buy you a lot of kind of equity in the relationship too, if you do it well. And like, they're willing to kind of see through some things later on and, and, you know, be okay Absolutely. with it. Absolutely. Absolutely. It plays, it plays a huge role, but anyway, we can, you know, we could talk for hours and hours about um, new hires and, and, and ways to go about it. But, you know, my, my, my whole goal with, with this is really to talk about, you know, you know, HR and people ops has really shifted, you know, throughout the last few years, the pandemic changed a lot of things. And, you know, there's a real need for an emphasis on the employee experience, but at the same time, especially within like the tech world, things have gotten harder, there's less funding, there's inflation, there's, you know, focus Mm -hmm. on bottom lines. So, you know, know, sometimes those things can be at odds. There's like this, okay, the business has to like perform really well and be really profitable and not spend a lot of money. And then you have these over, you know, overworked, understaffed kind of teams trying to, you know, continue to build a magical experience. And it's just like, you know, understanding what does that evolution look like? You know, what have you observed? And then, you know, talking about like, how do you continue to build great employee experiences in in this type of environment. So, you know, from your perspective, you know, over the last five years, pre-pandemic, pandemic times, post-pandemic times, what's kind of been the evolution of of HR and, and the people experience, you know, over those like, you know, that five-year period, I would say. Absolutely. So first I would say in the beginning, um, I had a lot bigger of a budget. <laughs> you know, pre-COVID, pre some of the restrictions. And um, we could meet in person once a year. Um, There was just a little bit more 
um, focus really on kind of that employee morale. Um, and then things, you know, changed post COVID. Uh, inflation changed, business restrictions got a little bit tighter, and needing to um, kind of tighten the pocketbook, so to speak, uh, kind of amped up. And so, yeah, definitely began feeling it post COVID, um, and then mostly within the past three years. Um, just the difficulties in trying to continue to put the employee experience first. Um, but in an organ in organizations that are really focusing on trying to expand their growth, um, expand their revenue, and so it, it's this it's this pull and uh, pull and push type relationship. And so found myself really in a seat where um, I had to get just really creative um, and expanding my. In HR, a lot of times you're a lone ranger. Uh, it, it's all on you, or if you're really lucky, you have a few colleagues in that space with you. Um, but even still, I found it really valuable to kind of reach outside of my department and just have others as a collaborative resource. So, you know, if you have this uh, idea of, you know, we, we want to do something special for, for May, or we want to do spe something special for you know, fitness in the month of August or, you know, all, all those different ideas that you have, you could collaborate with others within your exact organization and just say, hey, I have a couple of ideas. What do you think? What are some things that would benefit you as a contributor, as an employee um, that would actually bring you value? Um, and I got so many really great starting points from simply just collaborating and kind of in a sense, like surveying, but really kind of under the table, surveying different people. And it just gave me a baseline of some ideas. Um, and then you take what you have and you, you go to bat, right? You, you try and convey that the value that those initiatives or those products or those, you know, special uh, gifts that you're going to mail would bring to the employee experience and would overall bring to the organization. So definitely felt it get a little bit harder in that space after COVID. Uh, I think pre-COVID, in my role uniquely, we were really lucky and we got to meet up in person. We were a fully remote organization, always had been, uh, but getting to meet up in person once a year was like the highlight of everyone's year. They loved that part. Um, and then you have to take that part away with all of the different restrictions that we were faced with at that time. and. You have to get creative of how do we have those same interactions? How do we build those same relationships from a computer screen um, across time zones? And uh, so it, it definitely took a lot of creativity, uh, trial by trial and error, right? Like there's going to be some things you come up with and you think, oh, this is going to this is going to go over great. And then you get just an, not a great response to it. Not a lot of participation. You take that and you pivot you uh, iterate on it and you just keep going. You keep trying to find new ways. Yep. Yeah. I know that you all think a lot about employee engagement and how that's tied to business performance. Do, do you think it's possible for fully remote teams to have levels of employee engagement that are higher than, you know, the corollary in-person, you know, teams? And then, and then how do you also think about you know, when you think about different employee engagement type of initiatives and, and sending swag out to the teams and stuff, how do you think about kind of getting the buy-in and, and the ROI and how that ties to things like employee engagement? Absolutely. So with us being in a fully remote experience, um, yeah, focusing on the employee and uh, building those connections, those pieces uh, to the community of other employees was just, I was blessed that it was an opportunity that I got to focus in on. You know, not a lot of organizations have one individual that focuses on that, right? Sometimes it's the HR and it's one person and they're trying to do payroll and sales tax and employee engagement all at one time. So. Uh, I was lucky I, it kind of got divided out, but I, in my past years, um, had the opportunity to start surveying our employees uh, just to kind of get just a general baseline of their sentiment. Um, and that 
in and of itself is a whole rabbit trail you could chase. There's so many different ways to kind of analyze and survey employees. And there's now tons of software out there that you could partner with to utilize their experience to assess. Culture um, and yeah, absolutely. Coltramp is a big one. Lattice. There's a there's um, a couple of other in the space, but yeah. So I really kind of took a lot of their ideas that I wasn't able to spend money on, and just had to figure out a way to do it in house. Um, and once we had the baseline, once we figured out what questions we wanted to ask, figured out what value those questions would bring, and then got our baseline. From there, I was able to really have some skin in the game to show valuable data to the leadership team of, hey, we're not doing, we're not doing great. And if you want us to get to this next initiative by Q4, or if you want us to hit this mark by Q4, and we're going to be pushing everybody past their, right? Like they're, they're already just scraping by as far as morale and satisfaction and employee happiness. Like we've got to amp that up. We've got to focus in on that if we're going to keep pushing them through to Q4. And so really just having that that data really helped us kind of have a baseline to uh, show then when we would do these initiatives or send out the swag, the physical in like getting them something in the mail. And then we could go back uh, and do another survey six months, you know, a year later and see that employee experience or that employee satisfaction gauge go up that further gave us more you know ammunition to be able to go back and say hey this is really rewarding and this is giving value um, so uh, that was really what helped us be able to focus in on really nailing down what specific initiatives we want to annually celebrate right so birthdays and anniversaries those were kind of definitive we must do but we wanted to be able to expand our uh, you know expand the different things that we could celebrate yep did you um you know i, th I think you had mentioned something around like 44 percent boost to employee engagement yes that yes. bought up like the top like what was really driving that and did it feel palpable, like the change in the environment, and the culture? Oh, my goodness. Yes. So um, and this is due to, you know, a bit of an acquisition as well. So Tithely had acquired um, Breeze Church Management, which was the largest acquisition that that company had done at that time. And so you bring in 55 new employees to the mix um, and try and sprinkle them through some of the existing infrastructure. And that's when we got our baseline, right? So that's when we did our survey about six months post the acquisition. We, we sent out a survey just to figure out how's everybody feeling? Like, did that acquisition go well? Did we communicate transitions well? And we got a baseline. From there, um, we implemented the birthdays. Um, giving something in the mail for their birthday um, was something that they hadn't done before. And it's an international company. So there's teams in Australia and there's teams in Canada that had not in the past, due to just not having a vendor to be able to facilitate some of that, they weren't sending those employees anything right so they weren't included in that so first and foremost off the bat like figuring out hey we're going to do something through swag up and we're sending it to everyone um, and then of course incorporating work anniversaries um, the other thing that we implemented was um, a little bit more unique to ours but uh, it was just called employee care basically what that meant was i gave i gave the managers the power to say, I want to send something, I don't know what, but I want to send something to one of my employees, uh, whether it be for the birth of a new child, um, whether it be for they, they just recently got married, there was a recent death in their family, or something else, right? Some life circumstance that the manager wanted to be able to facilitate sending something. We uh, gave them the ability to do that. Um, and then, of course, a few little virtual webinars and think of that, things of that nature. Um, but yeah, so then a year later, we do uh, a second assessment after a couple of those initiatives uh, were launched out, not 
you know, not anything any revolutionary, right? But just very much specifically focusing in on celebrating those birthdays, anniversaries. And then of course, new hire onboarding, as well as um, <clears throat> those virtual kind of hangouts. We then do that survey and uh, we noticed once I did this, the, the, the calculations, the increase in employee engagement from the initial survey to the second time we did it, there was a 44% increase. Excuse me. <laughs> okay. 44% is wild. I, I was excited. I mean, I finally had, um, I finally had statistical data that I could take back and say, this is why this is important. This is why we need to have budget for this every year because it's working. Um, there's evidence, there's a return on our investment, right? The, the big word is the ROI. And I finally had, right, some substantial evidence that there was an ROI on putting some focus in on mailing things to people and, and just simply recognizing them in unique uh, celebrations within their within their life. I think the bar is pretty low in general. I mean, most companies you've ever worked with in the past have just not really been that thoughtful about like recognizing different milestones and, and recognizing yeah. employees in different parts. So it doesn't need to be some over the top thing like, oh, let's go give our employees like a new car or anything. But just little right. things can Socks. show yeah, exactly. Like sitting like you know, I came from an organization that, you know, when it was my birthday, I might have gotten an email, maybe. My team specifically might have said something to me in a Zoom call, but other than that, it was just a generic, you know, automated email saying happy birthday, which thank you. But from on the flip side, getting, even if it's just like a bag in the mail and it's got some stickers and a pen, like con some confetti, it, it's something very simple. Someone had to think ahead, get that put together, mail it to me, which just conveys care and intentionality for me as an individual. Like it just recognized me as an individual versus just one of the many. So yep. I, I just found, that there was a lot of value in doing that. I think the uh, you know the the acquisitions too and mergers are a huge moment in time where again could really make or break kind of that integration process because it's almost like I don't know for for people that have had parents that have separated and they they have a stepdad or something or stepmom and their kids kind of get integrated into the family and it's like you know the success of how those kids get to get along like can totally make or break the relationship between those like the step parents and stuff because if the kids don't like each other it's like so hard to live under the same roof and it's almost the same thing it's like you have one you know set of children and another set of children coming together now under one roof and it's like the way that that's done thoughtfully to make us all feel like no we're actually part of a greater thing that's together we're not separate it makes Absolutely. such a difference and you're talking about acquisitions where tens hundreds of millions or maybe billions of dollars are being spent and like the success at the end of the day rides on the people that are in those companies continuing to stay and deliver and and do yes. all the things so you know it, we see that a lot we do a lot of you know projects with our clients on mergers and acquisitions just to like really help drive that um you know that that continuity and and bring people together um you know last question then i want to get into a little bit of like how how we're helping on this problem but yeah. um you know with again with all these different types of initiatives and and you know teams that are small a lot of times it's like a single person at a company doing mm -hmm. these things like how have you found it hard to like scale these types of programs out or like before you found swag up it's like hey those are good ideas but we just don't really have the bandwidth to be able to like get something like that done oh man i mean back in the day i would go get t-shirts and have boxes in my closet and I would have to physically package. I mean, even birthdays, I would go to, you know, a local store like Target or Walmart and I would buy like a journal and some pens or something else. And I would buy wrapping paper and I would wrap it and then I would take it to the post office. Right. And yeah, to continue to do that at scale was just like, this is not 
going to continue to work. It works right now, but as we grow, we really do need to have a different vendor um, or someone else that can ship stuff for me because that was the biggest thing was storing it and then going and shipping it. Um, just the amount of time out of my day and obviously out of my space that it took. Um, <laughs> and that's what started my search all those years ago. Um, my husband worked for a company that they ordered swag through and they got it shipped to them. And I thought, why, why have I never heard of this? This is something we could totally use. And of course, in my search found you guys and uh, man, revolutionized my role. The amount of administrative time that it took off of my week, week by week schedule um, was massive. Um, and just making it really helped me make sure I kept up with stuff too, because honestly, if it's, if it's just you and you're doing everything, there's times where you want to be able to be proactive because you know, certain months are going to be busier or certain weeks, you know, payroll periods, things like that. You're going to just be slammed and you need to be, you know, thinking ahead and set stuff up to queue up. We well, can't do that when you're doing it by yourself and you're doing it from, your home and the post office. And so uh, that's where being able to queue things up within Swag Up and utilize y'all shipment feature. Um, and then of course, warehousing it was just revolutionary <laughs> for for our company at the time. Love it. Well, as, as you know, we've, we've made some, you know, we're, we're always looking to make this process more, less, less friction filled, you know, trying to make it as simple as possible. How can one person you know, handle global swag management across their entire company for all these different use cases. And, you know, we've, you know, one of the things that have always been a pain point still is just like getting the information from like your systems into our systems, like whose birthday is it, whose right. anniversary is it, who is the new hire, what is their address? Like there's, you know, there are ways that we were, you know, helping make that easier, but there was still an element of like administrative, you know, tasks and burden to kind of stay on top of that. So, you know, we're excited, you know, wanting to walk through some of the stuff that we've done and, you know, get your perspective, but also just share how we've thought about it and how you think about these things to, to the broader group. So I'm going to go through here and just do a quick, um, you know, walk through of, of the integrations functionality that we built specifically for HR and people ops team. So it's about 50 different HR IS integrations, you know, and anything from Workday for the bigger companies, Bamboo HR, we use JustWorks. I think you had used JustWorks before. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and all the other ones in between. Um, and it's natively built right into the platform. So we're just going to get into this um, quickly. It was fun too when we were chatting, you know, leading up to this and you were talking about how, you know, new hire, work anniversary, birthday are like the three big moments for you all. And that's exactly what we've built around. So, you know, if you've never been into the Swaga platform before, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you could do here. There's, you know, creating the products. We we say create, automate, distribute. We help you create, you know, incredible high quality branded merchandise. We do all the design work. We help you distribute it globally, manage the inventory, you know, ship everywhere you need. And then also the automation portion, which is like, how do we make this process easier and easier for you? And that's really mm -hmm. where we're kind of talking about today. So if if you've been in the swag up dashboard, you'll notice this left left bar nav. This is new; it's not out yet. So I'm I'm doing like a sneak peek. Sneak in our peek. Team. <laughs> yeah, our product team's probably not too happy about it, but whatever, it's okay. So if you go if you go into the platform today, we've got this integration section, and like I said, there's about 50 different HRS platforms. You'll be able to go in here and just connect with your credentials to your HRS if you're an admin. There's a few different ways to connect depending on like which platform it is. On the JustWork side, I just log in with my account and then I can create like a, a user basically that allows our integrations to pull the data that we need. Once it's connected, I can go right in, in here to JustWorks and view. And as I said, we've got the three core, what we feel are like the three core moments in time for an employee, mm -hmm. which is when they're hired, when it's their birthday, when it's their, you know, when it's their anniversary. Um, so I'll walk through these three and we'll talk a little bit about like how we're making this scalable and, and more manageable and elizabeth feel free to interject at all if you have any even questions for yourself or you know thoughts or you know just knowing the context of what this was like before and, and after but um so i'll show you real quick so a new employee is hired what we can do here is we allow you to set up three different types of automations 
do you want to send this new employee a specific product or pack? So you, Hey, every new employee gets the socks or every new employee gets, you know, the new hire package, or do you want to do it more like, Hey, we want to send them a redemption link and we want that to just automatically get emailed to them when they're hired to say, Hey, Bill, you know, super excited to have you on the team. We want to send something your way, head to this link and go, you know, pick something out. It's helpful for like sized items or, you know, just making right. sure you get up to the date, you know, e address information and stuff, just in case your, in, your system doesn't have that, just make right. sure you get that information as needed. I know you have used Redeem for a lot of different, um, you know, touch points throughout time. So. Yeah, it's been a great resource for, we've done, we've used it for Christmas and we've actually used it for employee appreciation uh, day as well. So kind of two different uh, ways to look at it. Um, but for me, it all went back down to budget. Um, employee anniversaries and employee birthdays, I knew we were buying that and we were going to buy it for every single person. But if not everybody wanted the employee appreciation gift, I didn't want to spend the money. I wanted to save it for another, you know, uh, internal program. So that's where that redeem link came in really helpful. You kind of create this cutesy little dashboard. You can even show them what product they can pick and or just pick the one. Um, but it makes it super simple sending that out. Hey, we're celebrating you. Can't wait to send this your way if you're interested, however you word it. And then you get your list of people who are interested. And then you just queue up the shipment from there and uh, definitely takes all of the automation or <laughs> it makes it automated for sure. It takes all of the manual process of keeping a spreadsheet of people's addresses and figuring out what all they want. It does all of that for you. Yep. And then, you know, the before and after though, of even before you still had to come in to the redeem section within the platform and put the person's, you know, you know, send them the link or something or do something right. to like make that happen, which, you know, it's not right. the end of the world, but there's still something you gotta have to remember to do in the back of your mind. Mm -hmm. The whole idea here now is when these things happen in the HRIS system, they're automatically triggering, you know, the links to go out or the products to go out or, you know, that last one, which we didn't talk about is you can also just give the employee credits to a storefront to go buy something. So, let's, and you can mix and match these things together. You could say, Hey, every new hire is going to get the welcome box, but they're also going to get $25 to go shop our swag store and automatically yeah. get an email that says, Hey, you know, you know, we're super excited to have you. We want to send you 25 bucks to go pick out something. And maybe they want to pick like a dog leash or something for their dog, or they want to pick a blanket for their home, which is not mm -hmm. always the same that every new hire gets, but they get to kind of tailor their experience a little bit. Um, and from a setup process, it's, it's pretty, you know, fun and simple. So when you're talking about redeem, we pull through all the redeem pages that you've built, you can basically link the experience to it. And there's a few different things that are interesting. So one, we allow you to customize the email that people are going to get so that you can have like a, an exact message that you want going to these people. And you can actually see what that email is going to look like. I'm just going to put awesome. in some, some test information here just so we can keep it moving. Um, another important step here is we allow you to automatically trigger or manually check. So do you want these to just happen all the time and you never look at it? Or do you mm. want these to get stopped at like a manual checkpoint just to make sure, hey, is this what we wanted to happen? Are these the right people and, and give you that control? Um, and then, you know, once you get comfortable with the control, you can maybe move it back to automated and, and you mm -hmm. trust the process, but it allows you to make sure that things are going to the right people without, um, you know, any system errors. And then the other thing too, is like, do you want this to happen like on the higher date or on the, on the start date? Or do you want this to happen before the start date or after? Right. The start date? So that's what we've yes. done here as well. It's like, okay, you can trigger it on the event date. Or actually, no, I wanted to trigger, you know, three days before the start date or three days after the start date. Same thing with anniversaries. You don't really want it to trigger on the anniversary. You kind of want it to trigger maybe five days before the anniversary. So it gets exactly. there right around their anniversary day. So we've given, given awesome. some flexibility there to make it a little bit more, um, you know, custom and, and exactly what you want. And then basically you just set that up and, and what you'll see here is these are already set up. You can see, you know, the shipping method, if it's manual, if it's not, as those are coming through, you see those in the actions here. So you have this running log of like all the different, you know, packages that have gone out, all the redemptions, which action they're tied to, or is it a birthday? Is it a new hire? You can filter these lists. You can export these as well. So you can bring them back to your team to run reports mm -hmm. or whatever it might be. You can also see if there's an issue. Hey, this didn't go out because, you know, we don't have enough credit in our account or we don't have enough inventory of that product anymore. And you'll be able to kind of see that, that it's paused and you can, you know, fix that and, 
and retry it. So it makes That's it awesome. see everything in, in one spot. Um, you know, the anniversaries are, are fun. So what we've been seeing some companies do as well is it's not just anniversaries. You can also set up uh, days, you know, so what we've seen some companies doing is like, Hey, on the 90 day mark, we mm -hmm. want to send something to somebody on the 180 day mark, six months in, we want to send something. So it's really recognizing like the journey that they're on, not always like, okay, it's your one year, it's your two years, it's your three years. It's like, no, we want to plan out what is the first year at Tidely look like, look like, what is mm -hmm. the first year at Facebook look like? And let's hit them with different milestones along the way. Um, so That's we allow awesome. you to basically set up as many of these as, as you'd like. So let's say you have the one year, I can add a two year, I can add a five year, I can add a 10 year, but again, I can also add um, you know, a 90 day, 180 day, all those types oh of things. Oh my gosh. Um, That's fantastic. Cause that, that is something that was harder to do was create separate kind of milestone rewards or gifts for those that are maybe celebrating the five year mark versus the one year mark. Um, and uh, being able to automate that is so phenomenal. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. And, and you can start to your point, really kind of think ahead. It's like, okay, what is our program here at our company? Like, let's set that in place ahead of time. Let's be very intentional and deliberate versus like, this constant reactive nature of like, oh, like let's send Sally something because we like Sally and it's like her two, you know, her second year here and she gets <laughs> something, but the other person doesn't get something. And it's just kind of ad hoc and random. And it's like when you're feeling it or not, you know, it's like really let's be intentional about it. Let's get the budget ahead of time. Let's, we know the impact that we're trying to have. We know the impact it does have. And, and let's set this up in a more, you know, manageable kind of, kind of way. Um, and then the, the birthdays, you know, same thing again, for each of these, you can, you can set up all three of these, you can send a product and a redeem link and, and shop credits. It's, it's really up to you, but you know, we're super excited about this. We think that it saves one, uh, just a lot of time and, and effort and ensures the consistency, but it, it also allows teams to start thinking differently about just employee experience and like being, mm -hmm. you know, Oh, this is finally something that can be done scalably. Um, but at the same time, it's like, how do you do it? thoughtfully where it's not just, you know, the same things for every single person at every single mile. So right. let's set them up in a way that's a little bit more custom. Let's customize the message. Let's, you know, let's let them pick something here, but let's also send them the item, you know, and, and, and kind of gives the companies the flexibility there. So, um, you know, kind of when you came to us in 2018 versus what, what, you know, we've done now, what you see, like what's <laughs> kind of the, what's kind of your perspective on the evolution of, of, of things? Oh, <sighs> I mean, definitely the dashboard, you know, the user interface has been modified and, and um, enhanced so much over over time. I think y'all had always done, um, you know, buying the bulk swag, creating the package, creating the boxes and then storing it. But the interface of how we then go to signal for that shipment to go out or queuing them up ahead of time. Uh, the creation of the redeem page that was new within my time here and uh, definitely began using that uh, being able to track credit store credits track inventory being able to communicate back and forth with you guys on mock-ups like there's just been I mean the list can continue how many improvements have been made um, that has just continued to make the administration of employee swag or just gifting in general recognizing those milestones and anniversaries just that much easier for fully remote organizations that are looking for a kind of one-stop shop that that and now of course with the integration with your hris system i mean that was the that was the if i could have put in a wish list item that was on my wish list for a long time and so i think i shared with you when we last met um, you know, that thinking ahead um, conversation, I would go into uh, January or February and I would queue up anniversary gifts for the whole year. And I would specifically put in there when to ship it, et cetera. And I would queue it up for the whole year. And of course, silly me, novice in that space, learning sometimes by trial and error, I found out someone didn't get it. Uh, and I was just like, well, why not? And I would go in like, well, I don't live there anymore. <laughs> right. And that was just this, like, I wish we could figure out a way to where it would automatically update the address so that I could queue it up ahead of time, which saves me so much administration. Um, and so when you guys announced that, oh man, 
I was giddy. <laughs> I was like, this is just so awesome. <laughs> and we talked about like, you know, up to the last moment before shipping, whatever the the, the latest address information is, that's what's going to be used. And, and you're not going to have like legacy information that, that doesn't get, doesn't get updated. What do you do with, you know, the extra time at this point, do you like go to the beach during the day or something or you get to do? Other oh, things? right. <laughs> you see those three humans. That's what takes up my time. I wish. No, I, I get to be creative. I get to, you know, all of the things that you want to do that you have to put on the back burner because you just have so many daily administrative tasks. When a bunch of this stuff becomes automated and you start getting a little bit more organized, a little bit more proactive, you then have the capacity to actually kind of research and start thinking ahead and looking at, um, you know, just different ideas, different initiatives, different things that you can do. Um, one of the things that we were kind of on our path towards was kind of like a performance management, you know, like that was something the company had just over time, we hadn't gotten to it yet. But all of a sudden, now we had a little bit more free time to begin researching all of those uh, future opportunities. Yep. Awesome. Well, yeah, I wish I could go to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know how much beach there is in Arkansas these days. There's none. <laughs> I'd have to I'd have to fly. But we do have lots of lakes and lots of uh, we do have some beautiful waterfalls here. Yep. So, but yeah. Well, they're they're really trying to make Bentonville a, bu a big thing, the Walton family and stuff. So it it's a beautiful area. They really do. They invest a lot back into their community, and you can tell when you drive. You know when you're in Bentonville. It's just very well cared for. They invest a lot in the town. Um, so it's beautiful. Awesome. Well, we've got literally maybe three minutes here. I want to open up. I know that we don't have a ton of time, but anybody that had, you know, some, some really pressing questions before we, before we break off, whether it's for Elizabeth, just with her expertise and, and background or anything specifically around some of the things we talked about here, um, we'd love to, to take some questions. Um, but I also know that we, you know, we're hitting on the time and people probably have meetings and, and lives to get to as well. So. I love the um, Michaela in the chat, keeping up with some of these questions. Have you ever stored swag at your house? I'm like, <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, I hope I'm not the only one that's been there. I'm sure you have heard many of people oh. share that. <laughs> yeah, like the spouses of the CEO, like, has, has, like mans it in the garage and they go do it during the day or something. It's just all these wild things, you know? Um, mm -hmm. it's still, I mean, it's still a pretty broken process in general. I mean, it, you know, everybody knows about swag and they know, you know, that people love it, but I don't think that a lot of companies know that it can be done in a more efficient manner, you know, and mm -hmm. I think it holds people back from really using it to its full potential. You know, I think there's a lot more use cases that people would open up branded merchandise to if they knew like, oh, I can actually manage that and I can get it to people globally and I can do it at these different moments in time. Like, okay, like that is a good solution to this problem. Some, you know, Because otherwise you get these companies that will just say, okay, I'm going to send them like a $25 gift card to Starbucks. You know, it's like, okay, like, I guess, you know, it's easy, but, you know, and, and then there's the other side of the spectrum. Like, let me like make them a custom, like woodworked box just for them, like just with their name inscribed. Like I get that too. But there's like some middle point that I think is probably right. You know, right? Because you know, scalability is a, an important um, facet in some of that for some organizations. I for sure, um, I viewed swag as the. I, I always viewed it this way: every employee is a representative of our organization, and if we're fully remote, they could be working from Starbucks, and if they have a branded mouse pad, or if they have a branded laptop cover or a t-shirt or a hat or a mug or whatever, they are continuing to spread brand awareness as an employee. And what better for an employee to be so in love with where they work that they want to be a brand ambassador, right? Uh, they want to just spark conversations with people just simply based upon some of the products that they have right there with them. So that was always in the back of my mind too. The intentionality with some of the swag is it's not just so that they have something with your company's logo on it. It's so that they can continue to be a brand ambassador wherever they're working um, and, you know, develop that brand loyalty. It, it always 
as from an HR professional, it always brought me so much joy when I would jump into a Zoom room and I would see in the Zoom rooms with those employees all of the different swag that I had sent them over the years, just kind of piling up in their, you know, on their counter, different things or their mouse pad or their cup or even the shirts that they were wearing. It just they enjoyed it. They felt part of something. So it was really rewarding to get to see that. 100% totally agree. There's so many, uh, so many different benefits of it. So we appreciate you jumping on Elizabeth. We appreciate everybody that, that joined us. 